So yeah, man, what we're going to do today is we're going to just run you through a bit of coaching for the emotional, mental, like spiritual aspects of your life. Uh, see if we can help you have some breakthroughs and potentially figure out if there's anything that's actually blocking you from, you know, going to that next level of your life. So the beginning, what we're going to do is actually just identify like what are some of your goals and what are some of the cha challenges that are coming up for you. And then we can work through some processes and stuff like that to um, dive a bit deeper. And at the end, you know, you're going to leave with a plan, some actionable steps and some, you know, some frameworks that you can walk away with and actually use in your daily life. Does that all sound good? Love it. I'm excited. Sweet. Cool. So first of all, tell me, yeah, what are your goals for 2024? Like, tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do for work? Um, you know, and, and yeah, what are you wanting to achieve this year? I do digital marketing. That's my, my trade. Um, I do it full time. I do it freelance and I do it on personal projects with friends. I love it. I think it's my ikigai. It's the, my calling, um, talk about it all day for free. I do it for free. You know, that's, that's the thing that I love. Um, and I still love corporate as well. So I definitely like, you know, jumping in job to job and, you know, learning from, yeah, from people in the industry as well. Um, so that's, that's my passion in terms of goals. Like to be honest, I'm, I'm in this transition period. Um, 2023 has been a crazy year. Um, uh, so old man got diagnosed with lung cancer and then um, he passed away six months later in July. And then I then got thrown into having to close his um, business. Um, he had a legal practice, a sole trader. Um, so, and I'm not a lawyer. So then I had to like chase clients, chase debt, pay off like barristers, um, you know, negotiate the the rental property, like, you know, all that, all that fun stuff. And then also deal with the law society and, you know, making sure that, um, yeah, all the legal implications and due diligence have been completed. Um, I had to take a career break, uh, for that as well. Um, and yeah. And then, and then all this is very brand new experience for me. I've never been to a funeral in my life ever, but a few weddings and that's it, you know, that's where I'm entering, but yeah, just, it's like being you know, an alien plonk on this earth. And then, you know, when someone passes away and they go, here's all these things you need to do. And then, you know, and then so, um, and that's not even the hardest bit. I think the hardest bit was definitely the beginning, um, going through the tough conversation with my old man. Um, I guess he didn't just, you know, we had time spent together. So I, I got a lot of closure, um, but it was definitely rough, um, seeing the deterioration of a loved one. Um, and then towards the end of the year, having to deal with wheels in a state, like, so I'm a child of an immigrant parent. Um, you know, so yes, they did amazing stuff to get us here. Um, you know, like learning a new language, going from east to west, um, kind of ideologies and, you know, trying to set up a home base. But, uh, for us, it's like what gets us here doesn't get us there. And the next step as the second generation, like navigating through with no real like support, I guess, or establish like, you know, customs or, uh, you know, framework or, or you know, whatever the way of living, um, cause it's all new. So, um, it's good and bad. I think it's an opportunity to, uh, create the life that we want because uh, we're almost like a blank page but also it's kind of like uh, unnerving because there's not much guidance um as well yeah and then also um yeah and then to finish it off i uh yeah w relationship breakdown uh was uh end of a breakup um of two and a half year relationship um that was definitely uh really cha challenging and rough as well that one uh really making me question everything about myself uh, as my value, my worth, um, who I am and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, in terms of like goals this year, definitely want to, um, find myself, find my feet. Um, yeah. So I would say a month ago, I probably would say, I don't know who I am, what, what am I doing and where I'm going I'm kind of bouncing back or bouncing forward, uh, is the word I want to use, uh, in terms of like realizing that this is an opportunity. Um, you know, I can be who I am, whoever I am, like be wherever I want to be and, you know, do whatever I want. I just don't want to, the self limiting to be so I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. 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 It's a lot on the shoulders at the moment. Um, in terms of also, um, uh, my mom having to, uh, transition from working full time with my old man, they were stuck together 24 seven for the last 20 years. Mm. Um, and then my sister also, uh, finished her, uh, seven year relationship with someone as well. Um, relationship breakdown. So both my sister and myself have moved back home with my mom. And my mum is also like, like all three of us as a family is, you know, like the narrative we have is that we lost our significant others, uh, you know, in 2023. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the history, the context, and then where I want to go. I'm not sure. That's, that's kind of like the real answer. Um, yeah. yeah. 
definitely want to continue uh double down on some of the things i love um and my core values i guess and then go from there yeah Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing all that with me, man. That sounds like a very big year. Like we, we were talking in the messages before we jumped on this call and you mentioned that stuff to me and it's obviously, yeah, it's huge. So I'm sorry to hear about you, you know, your old man and I'm sorry to hear about, you know, your partner and stuff like that. That would be uh, very challenging and, uh, and I'm sure it's been quite a transformative journey for you. How, how did you process all of that? You know, how did you go with all of that? You said that the family, you know, that obviously the funeral and everything like that, the death was one of the first you've experienced. And obviously it's very close to you. It's your old man. How was that experience for you? Like before that, obviously being quite, I guess, maybe naive to that part of life and then going through such a huge challenge. Like how, how did you manage that? How did you process all of that? I think suppressing emotion is probably the word I want to use. Taking this day by day, I think um, I've always been very logical and solution focused. Um, didn't really lean into um, how I felt. And I think um, there's pros and cons in that. And so I was solution focused. Um, I was just trying to get through things. I think um, that has served me well in terms of um, me being a very ambitious person, uh, you know, wanting things, desire, and probably a lot of like, a scarcity mindset as well yeah coming from that um so it has served me well in terms of like my career or um me trying to achieve my personal goals yeah um it's you and your sister and your mum now so you're also i guess having to step into a role of more of a leader in the family from that masculine perspective i guess yes yes that's the word uh yeah. I, it's a new terminology that's coming into <laughs> my realm of uh you know understanding yeah yeah, yeah. How, how's that been for you? Um, scary. Um, definitely losing the father figure. I guess my old man was like, you know, he was a lawyer. So then there's also like the level of like, oh, he's above law. Okay. All of a sudden losing that safety, safety net gone. Yeah. And uh, I'm fearful and scared and realize that now I, I am, I'm my own person. I have a, a high level of agency in my own life and as well as my family. Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. And it's it's a, not just a personal experience. Like you said, it's like an interpersonal experience. You, your mom and your sister and you are all going through the same experience. I think it's really beautiful that you guys have each other like that and that you've moved back into home. And that's, I guess, a silver lining in a very dark situation. Um, so that's pretty beautiful that you can all go through that experience together. At least you don't have to go through it alone. Thank you. That's definitely... It's true now. I, I'm starting to see it. Um, at the time, it was pretty dark. Um, there was at one point we, all three of us, we were just crying together at one point, uh, one of those days. And, you know, um, that was definitely a dark point. And, you know, uh, yeah, but we, we are improving. I am seeing progress. Definitely want to continue on this trajectory. Cool. Yeah, it's a dark point. But I think there's also beauty in that grieving together. Like you said, you had some time with your dad, right? Six months to, to be with him, to talk things through that gave you a sense of closure and then, you know, being close with your family as well and going through that grieving process together. I think it's a really normal, really healthy thing to do, to be surrounded by your loved ones and to grieve together. There's nothing wrong with those sad days. There's nothing wrong with, you know, the, the darkness even, uh, it's actually okay to allow yourself to go through that. So well done then. Thank you. Um, yeah, still, still processing actually. Um, I only started, like, the other thing I was, I jumped into was, um, therapy, I, um, I seeing a psychologist, which is, you know, not really part of like culture or, you know, um, <laughs> or generation. I don't know what it is, but, um, it's, it's a new tool that I only, you know, started implementing my life. Yeah. Um, last few weeks and I only finally starting to like process some of the, the silent battles that, uh, we had to go through, um, last year. Uh, early last year and it's unfolding now um, and through that as well good work because that takes courage as well to go to a psychologist or to go to anyone right even to talk to me today it takes courage to kind of like allow yourself to open up and be vulnerable so uh, you know i really commend you on that that's awesome tell me a little bit about like you know the things that you've been talking about with your psychologist um, you said the silent battle it sounds like you're opening yourself up to go into the feeling um and to start to maybe unpack those suppressed emotions so Perhaps we could talk about some of the big ones that are coming up for you uh, and we can work through through some of those. How does that sound? Yep. Yep. Sounds good. I'd love to know, like now you're coming into 2024, you're wanting to rediscover yourself. You've probably got to create a, a, a new sense of identity. I always like to talk about the identity as something that we mature, right? Um, it's not something that we have to like, okay, well, we've got, we, we lost 
that old self. Uh, and now we have to create a new self, which is what a lot of people kind of think, right? They're like, oh, that is gone now. But it's not necessarily gone or that version of you is not necessarily gone, but it's like you've gone through some changes, uh, some some events that have been, you know, profound. And there's an opportunity for you to evolve as a as a person, to to like consolidate all the things that happened earlier in your life into a more evolved, mature version of yourself now. So I'm wondering, like, what are the main, you said, you've mentioned a couple of things, like there's some fear, like it's scary to do this. Um, you know, obviously there's going to be grief and sadness. Is there anything that's really specifically coming up for you or being called, um, called up within you? And what I mean by that is like, you know, so- something that's recurring for you a lot, something that's like really in your, um, coming back to your mind over and over again. Is there anything like that that's re- recurring that you feel like is being asked to be worked through the feeling of not being enough yeah. uh, comes to mind i think that will that actually plays out <laughs> in all aspects of my life in health wealth and you know relationships right uh, i think that's the number one thing waking up this morning i was yeah feeling very sad obviously because there's also the end of a relationship and then then going oh you know here here, here i am again alone um and trying to you know navigate through these challenger, challenging times. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's the first thing I woke up with this morning. Okay. Yeah. When did the relationship breakdown happen? Hannah ended up with me at the time, November, late November. Mm-hmm. And it happened just before I I uh, was about to f- take on this uh, trip with my mum. Because uh, obviously my mum and myself had a really challenging year and there was a lot of arguments, a lot of fights, um, a lot of emotion. And I wanted to create some quality time. Uh, by taking on a trip um, overseas, it happened suddenly. I I did I did not see it coming. Honestly, I felt blindsided. I but after processing some of my emotion and thoughts, and you know, I'm I'm anxiously an attached type of person, um, yeah. so I analyze things, um, and then I go, I oh, realize maybe now I go, oh, yep, there was probably a few things leading up to it mm-hmm. um, that I didn't see or didn't took it for granted or I didn't, you know, I think my emotional sensitivity was not there yeah uh, um so yeah you were you were elsewhere <laughs> your attention was elsewhere. yeah i just didn't see it uh right now i have a lot of regret as well through that still working for it i know that i, I did my best at that point in time that was late november till now and that is pretty fresh as well yeah yeah now we're in january so that's still a couple of months and two and a half years is a pretty big like it's a pretty big decent relationship but there's a feeling of like not good enough right of like oh i didn't do good enough a little bit of regret i uh, could have done better and then waking up feeling like man like wish 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 i could have done better it's always the yeah yeah sometimes there's a feeling of can't help but it was you know sat with me you know kind of thing but yeah working through that cell talk is what i do yeah one one of the things that's really really healing is um forgiveness right and you know obviously when we think about forgiveness often we think about forgiving others but one of the most healing things I've ever experienced, and you know, I know a lot of my clients and stuff have experienced, is a sense of self-forgiveness, forgiving the self, right? Because we, you know, in this case, it's like you kind of, you kind of beat yourself up a little bit, right? And you're really hard on yourself. Could have done better. I'm not good enough. When you can learn to just accept yourself and forgive yourself for anything that's happened in the past, you can come into a real state of peace. Do you think that there's room for you to forgive certain things that have happened, like just within yourself? I'm trying. I'm trying. Let's do a little exercise now before we go any deeper. I don't know. I know you said you've been watching a lot of content on Instagram and stuff like that. There's an exercise that I was talking about last week, which is called the centering exercise. Really, really simple little exercise. And we can do it just now just to kind of ground ourselves into the present moment and allow a bit of space for, yeah, for that acceptance, for that forgiveness, right? Because like I'm trying to forgive myself. There's a lot of thoughts probably that are in resistance to that it's like well i shouldn't forgive myself because of this thing i did this wrong i did this wrong right there's all these mental concepts and mental constructs of like what you have done wrong or why you're not good enough right what we have to understand is that that's all they are they're just mental constructs and they're just thoughts and and those thoughts they come from unprocessed emotions these are the suppressed emotions that you're aware of like you know you are holding stuff down before we dive into that we can dive into that before we do that, 
I want to just offer up this little exercise. It's just called the centering exercise. So it's really, really simple. And it's something that you can do at any point of your day. Whenever you're feeling, for example, like anxious, or if you wake up feeling anxious, or if you wake up feeling not good enough, you, you feel like you're just under attack by your own self-talk and your own the inner, that inner critic, you can easily silence that just by doing this exercise. So all we're going to do is we're going to take just one breath. So we're going to take an inhale through the nose. We're going to breathe into the belly. We're going to open ourselves up. And then we're going to exhale through the nose. We're going to let go. So when we let go of the breath, we also want to let go of any tension in the body. So we relax the shoulders. We relax the belly. Exhale, let go. And then all we're going to do is we're going to just center ourselves, which means like to stay present and only for two to five seconds. So just a short period of time. And when we're doing that, see if you can come out of the mind. Don't think or allow yourself a, a moment of like no thinking. And instead of the no thinking, come down into the feeling state. Come down into just feeling what presence feels like. Come down into just feeling what it actually feels like to center yourself. You want to do that with me now? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Cool. So let's just take a deep breath. Three, two, one, breathing in. And let it go. Just stay present right here feeling and what do you feel trying to focus which is probably me resisting at the moment trying to focus on a focus to be here is it hard yeah uh, there's definitely the fact that we're on camera so. so there's like a feeling of like almost embarrassment or a bit of like humiliation of like, oh, I'm not sure if I can be present. So what you've got to understand, this is also fine as well, right? Very normal. Uh, and I'll explain it to you a little bit. It's good that you're having this experience because it's bringing some awareness. Your center, as, as we're doing this exercise, is being placed outside of yourself. So for example, it's being placed at like maybe the camera or maybe it's being placed at me or maybe it's like all the way in the future of like, what if someone watches this and looks at me and funny, right? Or thinks I'm weird. So can you see how your, your center is like away from yourself? I want you to, I want, I just want to like let you know that it's absolutely okay. <laughs> and it's, um, it's actually quite funny when you, when you realize like, wow, how tricky is the mind, right? Worrying about something that might happen in the future, which has actually got probably you, you wouldn't even know about even if it did happen, right? It's a sense of fear, fear of what, what people might think or shame of what they might think, embarrassment of what they might think. Maybe it's like even embarrassment of what I might think. What it really is, is it's, uh, it's, this, it's a disconnection from, from self. It's actually a sense of self-humiliation. It's I'm not comfortable within myself. I'm not able to center myself because my center is, I'm placing it like outside of myself. So we'll do it again. I want you to just let go of all of that, right? Imagine that all of that's just because it is. You need to understand that you're not your thoughts. And even though that's very hard to understand it right now, you're probably going through it and you're like, man, this is hard. I feel like my thoughts are my reality, but your thoughts aren't your reality. What is your reality is in presence. It will be found in presence. So let's do it this time, but maybe we can close our eyes because sometimes it helps to close. Are you comfortable with closing your eyes? Yeah. Cool. Sometimes it helps to close the eyes just to kind of like shut out the world a little bit. So you can close down your eyes whenever you're comfortable. And even before we start, just take a deep breath by yourself in your own time. Breathing in and exhaling. Let it all go. Letting all the thoughts go. Letting all the judgments go letting all the attachments go. Just give yourself a few moments to let it all go. It's just you and me here, present. And then we'll take another breath in together in three, two, one. Big breath in. And exhale, let it all go. And simply notice what you're feeling. Notice your body. If you need to take another breath, you can. Breathing in and letting go. Just 
just a few short moments of present awareness. We'll take one more breath. And let it go. And then when you're ready, you can gently open up your eyes. What did you feel then? Good. It's uh, definitely a good feeling, I think. Did you feel calm? Yeah. Calm. Uh, yeah. Realize I'm in, in a room, you know, sheltered, stable, safe spot. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, man. This feeling of safety that you've just mentioned, it's really, really important. And I understand when we first started, maybe there was a feeling of not safe. It's a thought. It's a perception. It is a feeling as well, right? It's a fear. Fear. Not safe. Something is not safe. I'm perceiving there to be some sort of threat. But like you said, take a few deep breaths, come into the present moment, and you start to develop that feeling of safety. Now, obviously, you've been through a lot, man. I'm not going to, um, you know, avoid that. You've been through a lot. So this kind of exercise could be very confronting, right? Well, I'm sure that there would be a lot of emotion under the surface that is needing to be processed and needing to be felt. So the reason why I wanted to share this little exercise with you is because when you slow down, when you come into a place of like inner safety, you allow space for that processing to happen, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And you might not want to go that deep right now. You might even be holding it back because you're like, fuck this, we're recording. <laughs> we're going deep and we're recording. I don't want people to see. I totally understand that, man. And I respect that. And we can talk more after this about that. Um, I understand it can be confronting, right? And with what you've been through, there's probably a lot of sadness, a lot of like the anxiousness, a lot of the fear that you've just mentioned, right? And to allow that to come out, you have to be vulnerable. You have to open yourself up. And to do that, you do need to feel very safe, right? You do need to have a sense of safety. Like, for example, what you mentioned when you were with your family, right? A lot of crying. You're in the vicinity or you're in the environment of your family, your mum, your sister. So there is safety there. So you can allow that to come out. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. You, you said darkness when you were talking about that. It's actually beautiful because you're experiencing safety. You're experiencing that letting go, right? Yeah. Which is what it's trying to get out here, right? the exhale, letting go of the breath. When you really get that dialed in and you can let go just through that exhale, you can start to tune into your body and you can start to allow that space internally to process everything, right? I know you said one of your goals this year is to rediscover yourself. That's what we're doing here. And I know it can feel a bit like hard. It can feel a bit challenging. It can feel like maybe I don't want to face myself at that level right now. But I promise you that when you do get there and you will if you're open as you are it's a beautiful place to be a lot of self-confidence right a lot of self-acceptance a lot of self-forgiveness all of those beautiful things ultimately lead to more self-love right which is a very healing thing to align yourself with thank you that's all right how are you feeling how you like let's just kind of like take a step back and, and reflect on that how, how are you feeling after that is what's going on internally definitely feel more at ease right now i think initially definitely had the the butterflies excitement also like nervousness a little bit of anxiety what what's happening um you know i naturally jump from thought to thought i'm sure at the beginning you can see i'm just like all over the place um and after the breathing exercise, I can feel myself just chill out a bit. Yeah, just be more present and feel the the fan going through, you know, <laughs> the airflow in the room right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and just trying to take it in right now. You're opening up your sensory awareness. I know you might not have had a like a big kind of breakthrough experience or anything like that, or nothing too profound, but I think this this sense of sensory awareness of opening up your awareness is really important it's one of the things that i actually teach when i'm guiding people through meditation right something like the breath is a pillar for anchoring into the present moment which is what we were using just before but also listening 
So for example, listening to the fan or listening to my voice, it's a way to come into the present moment. And third is feeling another sensory experience, feeling the wind from the, from the fan, right? Um, you're becoming present by opening up your sensory awareness to this, this, this world. And the reason why that's important is because you, it gets you out of your head, right? Because in your head, like you said, I got, you know, we can't, I can't see in your head. Like, you know, I can read your body language a little bit, but I can't necessarily see in your head. But when you get out of your head and you can see in your body language since, you know, five, 10 minutes ago, there's a, a calmness, a bit more presence. So take a breath with me now, breathing in. Let go of your shoulders, let go of all the tension and just be present again for a second. Now, how do you feel? Better. A little bit more accepting of yourself? Yeah. Wasn't even uh, wasn't even thinking about myself. Wasn't even doing the u- usual judging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. That's good, man. Good job. It's progress, right? You, that's really, really good. I'm really happy for you. That's awesome that you've, you know, we came came through a little bit of a process just then, a little bit of a journey, right? Only a small little um, process, but still, nonetheless, you can see how that first breath we took, fear, anxiety, self-judgment, humiliation, shame, embarrassment, right? And then the second, the, the last breath was just like a bit more present, feel better, not even in my head, I'm not in my thoughts. That's the aim of the game. Get out of the head. Because the, the thoughts aren't real anyway, right? Do you think your thoughts are real? They feel real. Yeah, yeah. Well, the funny thing is they are real and then they aren't real as well. So they're not real in the sense that they are not who we are, right? Um, I'm going to talk to you about consciousness, right? Are you happy for me to just talk? It's a bit That's less of a, It's a bit less of a coaching session now and it's a bit more of like a teaching session if you're okay with that. I'm okay with it. I'm taking it a lot. I'm taking notes as well right now sometimes. <laughs> That's all. So you've got to understand what you really are, right? Which is, um, it's not the thoughts. The thoughts are something that you experience, right? You experience negative thoughts. You experience a feeling of not being good enough. You experience um, anxiousness. You experience, you're experiencing these thoughts, right? The, the, the thought of like a fear of judgment or there's a thought of like embarrassment or a feeling of embarrassment. So these are all things that you experience, but that is not what you are because you are the awareness of that, right? You are the consciousness or the experiencer, right? The experiencer, you're experiencing it. So oftentimes people get confused, right? A lot of, this is where a lot of like struggling and suffering happens, right? We've got the self, right? So Eddie and then Josh, right? These words, these labels, these concepts, we have an identity attached to it. There's an, there's an identity attached to Josh and there's an identity attached to Eddie, right? And there's a story for Eddie. Eddie's like not good enough or anxious or, you know, all these thoughts, negative thoughts and fear and anxiousness and all of this stuff. It's associated with Eddie. But when you say something like, like I am Eddie, you've got to understand that there's another part of you that's actually experiencing you, which is the I. I am Josh. How can there be the I that is aware of Josh and the Josh? Have you read The Power of Now? Um, I, I have the summary of it. The... <laughs> it's a good book, man. You should read it. Um, it's a great book. In, it, in the book, he taught, uh, the guy Eckhart Tolle, the author, he talks about he had this enlightening experience where he realized that he was not himself. He was like, if I can be aware of myself, then what's real? Is it the I that's aware of the self or is it the self that I am aware of? Like what's real, right? So when I talk about your thoughts are not actually who you are, uh, it's a paradox because at the same time, they also are what you are, but at one level, but at, at the very ultimate truth level, they are not what you are. They are just things that you experience, the I that is experiencing, right? So what you really are, the ultimate truth is consciousness. So your consciousness experiencing all of the thoughts. Does that make sense? When we're doing that centering exercise, I'm trying to help you 
get past the self and the thoughts so that you can connect with the I, the awareness, the presence, the one that's aware of the fan moving. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not in the story of it, of myself and my story anymore. I'm not in the negativity. I'm not in the thinking. Now I'm in the awareness of the fan. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's different. It's lighter. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. So the idea that I'm sharing with you is really to spend more time or work on spending more time as the awareness as opposed to as the Eddie, right? Eddie will still be there. Eddie will still do all the things that Eddie does, <laughs> but maybe he'll just struggle less because he'll realize that Eddie is just a construct anyway. Let's talk about how thoughts shape your reality, right? Because there's a lot of pro probably people will be like, well, no, well, like you are your thoughts. Like everyone says like thoughts shape your reality, right? And they do. Um, but I wanted to share, the things that I've shared with you so far help to realize that firstly, you're not your thoughts. And when you start to realize that you're not your thoughts, you all, it's like you, you step out of like, it's almost like if, if you are consumed by yourself and your, your, your thoughts, it's like you're in the passenger seat and like you, you're just driving along and the unconscious is just driving and you know, all of the suppressed emotions are just driving you and the negative thoughts are just driving you down this path of struggling and suffering. When you leave that story and you connect with the awareness that you are, it's almost like you have this breaking off period, which allows you to get into the driver's seat. And then you start to choose your thoughts. You start to choose consciously what you would like to create in your world. Does that make sense so far? It's like trying to bend reality. <laughs> it's like dissociating yourself. Seeing yourself in the third person is the, the thinking right now. Yeah. Yes. That's essentially what I'm talking about. Now, I don't mean to um, discredit the human experience, right? There is uh, a lot of valuable work in, um, not even valuable work, it's it's necessary to learn how to process your emotions and, and, and unpack the suppressed emotions. It, it, and essentially what it is, is to learn how to feel. You need to learn how to feel and you need to be okay with feeling. Like that's what's going to help you become accepting of yourself. It's learning how to accept the totality of what you are, which is all of the feelings, right? It's all of the bliss, all of the peace, all of the love, all of the joy, and also learning how to accept and feel and process the anxiety and the embarrassment and the shame and be okay with that. People would call that shadow work, right? It's like, okay, I'm feeling anxiety or I'm feeling embarrassment or I'm feeling humiliation. Some of the things that we've covered today a little bit. Can you get comfortable with those things as well? A lot of people resist those things and they try to say, I don't want that. I don't want that, right? Resisting, resisting, resisting. But that's pointless <laughs> because... If it's there, it's already happening. So the best path through that is to accept that that's happening and, and be okay with that as well. Not make it mean anything about who you are as a person. Just understand that that's a part of the human experience. How does that make you feel? If you were to approach your, those kinds of emotions with that attitude. Hopeful. Hopeful is the, the willing I want to go for. Yeah. And I guess it's overall positive. It's like another perspective. That's um, I want to put it. Um, I was I was trying to say like before. It's like trying to dissociate from how you experience reality, um, and then see things from a third third person point of view, and then being able to navigate the experience uh, rather than just being reactive and being in your head. I guess as you said, you are not your thoughts. Um. And maybe, yeah, and you are not how you feel as well. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a tricky one because like, um, I was trying to, I think I've always been very good at ignoring my thoughts, uh, or igno think ignoring my emotion and just be tunnel vision in trying to achieve or knock out whatever I need to do, mm -hmm. um, and just go tunnel vision. And I think, um, that probably hasn't served me. <laughs> it has, you know, it gets the job done, but probably it's just not how you should do things sometimes.
you can achieve a lot by doing that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. lot, you, you look at, a, especially men, bro. Like, you look at a lot of men um, in the older generations and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you can't achieve everything that you want to achieve by doing that. You can. Um, it's just, it's the energy though that you're in. Like, it, it will, you know, you can achieve everything and you can do it out of a place of like, um, like pride and almost like, like desperation of like, I need to get it right. Like I need to prove myself like, and you can do it that way, right? A lot of people do it that way. A lot of men have done it that way <laughs> and it works. You can do it like that. Um, I'm not going to say that you can't because you can, but it just hurts more, right? Like it's harder. It's more forceful. I do believe there's an easier way, a more gentle way. You can do the tunnel vision thing and you can suppress your emotions and you can go like head first and you can achieve your goals, but you're, you're not learning how to feel and you have to learn how to feel in the same way that you also learn, have to learn how to like think, right? You have to learn how to concentrate, to focus. So it's a, like, it's nuanced because you're not your thoughts, but you want to control and, and direct your thoughts. And also you are not actually your emotions either, but you want to learn how to feel them and move through them and process them. Does that make sense? So you have, so, so you're, you're experiencing the thoughts and the emotions and you're like, you want to become the master of them. It's not like, um, for example, what you're saying is, um, I was just able to tunnel vision. I was able to concentrate. I was able to focus and I was able to achieve lots of things, you know, I'm digital marketing guy and I've you know made, maybe made a business or I've created my life like the way that I want to and I'm doing like things that I want to do so there's it's obvious that you're concentrated and that you're focused but now you're at this point in your life where you're feeling um you know you've had some really significant events happen that aren't you know easy to move through and it's calling you into this um higher level of awareness of like okay I need to learn how to process my feelings now <laughs> I've avoided that for my whole life but now I need to work on that if you can approach it, you can approach it from a very like scientific way of like, okay, cool. What do I need to do to process my feelings? And it is like a, it is like a science, right? Once you know it, like once you know how to do it, you can process big things easily, but there is that journey of learning how to feel. And that's the hard part because feeling is vulnerable. <laughs> but when you, or and I guess when you, learn how to feel and when you learn how to be vulnerable you actually develop a level of you're learning how to be humble or you know have a sense of humility and when you have that like that's when you get true like unfuck with the ball energy because you're like okay cool i'm feeling embarrassed now but i don't give a fuck like i can move through this embarrassment with ease i don't actually care what people think right i'm, I'm able to be my authentic self I'm able to be my true self. Like, look at me. Like, this is who I am. I'm here. I'm a fractal of the divine consciousness being expressed in physical form. And this is who I am. Right? I'm this unique expression. And I'm not ashamed of myself. I'm not afraid of what you think. Right? And it's not in an egotistical way. It's more of in a, like a beautiful, compassionate way where you want that for everyone else as well. So that's the, that's the goal. When you rediscover yourself, which is your goal for the year, that's really what you're aiming for, right? Does that resonate with you? It does. It does. Cool. Very nuanced. Um, yeah. I, I've always said I don't care. It has come back to bite me though when I say I don't care, you know. And then let's let's look at what that means. I don't care. It's essentially um, it's essentially coming from an energy of like apathy or despair. I don't, I don't care. I, I don't care. I, I'm apathetic. Like I, I'm not interested. Like I, I don't care. It's, it's, it's hopeless. It's like whatever. Right. But what you're saying before is when you connect with the presence, you connect with like a feeling of like optimism and hopeful, it feels good. So if you just consider this, right, consider the feeling of being hopeful and optimistic and, and caring, like take a deep breath into that feeling right now. Hopeful, optimistic, caring. How does it feel? Take a deep breath into it. Connecting with your heart. How does it feel to be optimistic and hopeful and caring? It's a good feeling. It's where I want to be. Um, There's a certain like lightness about it. It's a bit. It's a bit lighter. Whereas when you think about, for example, I don't care. 
Um, I don't care. I'm totally indifferent um, or like even like apathetic about like I don't, I'm not interested in like what happens. Like, how does that feel? It, it feels a little bit like denser, a little bit more negative, right? You had to kind of put it on a scale. The feeling of like optimism and hope and um, caring, it feels like a bit lighter, a bit more freeing, a bit more open. Whereas the feeling of like apathy, I don't care. Um, it feels a bit denser, a bit heavier, a bit more negative. Right? One's on the more positive end of the spectrum, whereas one's on the more negative end of the spectrum. Now I can see by your body language, what's happening is that you're in your mind trying to think about it. And there's probably like a sense of pride or ego trying to understand it um, and feeling like I don't really understand it, um, <laughs> which isn't fine. It's just a sign, right? One thing kind of like what I'm going to leave you with is, is some processes um, or just actually we'll just stick with the one process um, of centering to, and the intention is to work on feeling, right? And so I know that there's been a lot happening for you. I know that's going to be confronting. Um, so you can, you know, and I know you probably don't want to do it too much on the call with me right now, but in your own time, you can work on this centering and feeling, right? And so the difference really is like, you know, when you're feeling, you're not in your head, right? You've got to come out of the head and you've got to come into the heart. That's where the feeling happens, right? And it's vulnerable and it's like, you have to open it up um, and it does take a little bit of time to, to get there because you have to quieten down the mind. You have to slow down the mind. You have to get like out of the mind, right? People say, oh, do you want to lose your mind? I disagree. I think you want to lose your mind, right? <laughs> the mind is like a, um, the mind is like a servant, right? So, and this, that you've been able to use your mind to create success in your life and business and that kind of stuff, right? With digital marketing, you, you use your mind a lot. But the mind is not meant to be the the leader, right? The heart is a better leader. Your intuition, your your heart, like your spirit talks to you through your heart. And your heart always knows, right, the the correct path for you and your unique journey. So my I guess we'll, we can kind of wrap it up a little bit my instruction for you is to work on connecting to your heart more and you can do that by centering yourself regularly so the centering exercise is really simple right one deep breath inhale exhale bring your attention to your heart and just be present for two to five seconds and then so that's it. That's, it's a really simple little exercise. You can do it anywhere. You can do it with your eyes open. You can do it with your eyes closed. Very easy to do. And then do that two to five times per hour. So I'm not going to say sit down for 20 minutes and meditate, although you can do that if you want, right? That's pretty easy to do. You can sit down, you can go get a guided meditation. You can, you, know, um, you can do 20 minutes of meditation in the morning or at the night. It's going to be really, really helpful for you. But something that's really practical as well is a centering exercise. So it's like mini meditations mini one second or like you know two to five second meditations two to five times an hour so it, like you know once every 10 minutes just take a breath and be mindful of that breath and do that every hour all day and if you do that if you practice that you will get more connected to your heart you will get more connected to your intuition you will bring your center back into yourself you will rediscover yourself which is the goal that you've shared with me, right? So that's something that you can take away from here and start practicing, right? And yeah, I hope this has helped you develop a new level of awareness of yourself, has it? It has. Um, yeah, I want to say thank you. It's it's a gift. I see it as this this idea you just given me is a, is a gift and I appreciate it. Do you have any questions or anything like that, man? Have a bit of like an open discussion if you want. Yeah, I think that because pre previously you said, um, you know, being unfuckable, I don't give it, you know, give a fuck. Like, that's why I was thinking of the nuance between that and I don't care. Mm. And, you know, there's one is like kind of attractive, but, you know, then I go, that's where I'm kind of still heck hung up on. Yeah. Um, so, 
Um, I'm going to share my screen with you and I'll, I'll talk you through it um, because there's a, I'm going to show you something uh, that I use with all my clients, right? Which is going to explain, I, I was trying to explain something to you before without this visual re um, representation. So it was probably not coming through properly, but can you see this? Have you seen this before? I just came across it. Uh, well, home scroll, like, I don't know, but basically right now, but I have something similar. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a map of consciousness. It's from actually this book right here, which is called Power Versus Force. So, so this is what we're talking about here. Ap like you know, apathy. I don't care. Essentially, that's what apathy is. It's like I don't care. It's that that's kind of energy. I don't care. When I'm talking about being unfuck with the ball, I'm not talking about apathy. I'm talking about more of this kind of energy. Reason, acceptance. I'm, I understand myself so well that. You could say anything to me and it wouldn't matter because I'm in total acceptance of myself, right? If I start crying and bawling my eyes out on this recording and, I, and everyone sees me, I'm absolutely okay with that. It's, it's not an issue. I don't, I'm not bothered by that. It's fine. I accept myself, right? So this require like there's going to be some forgiveness, right? You, this is, you know, this is something that we could talk more about, but there's there's going to be some certain things that you will um i'm assuming you know i don't know completely um but i'm sure that there's some things that you will be able to forgive yourself for that you might be holding resentment to yourself for you might be beating yourself up about you might be saying um yeah, like, oh, if I hadn't done that, right? You said regret, you're regretting certain things. If you can forgive yourself for those things and accept that they just happened and that was just the way it was, it's going to bring you into a higher level of self-acceptance. It's going to bring you into a, a, a feeling of or, or, like harmony. I'm okay with it. From that place, you can be more understanding of yourself and all, also more understanding of others, right? So the opposite is this apathy, right? Which is like, I don't care. I don't care about me. I don't care about you. I don't care about anything. Um, like I don't, I, I, I'm not interested, right? It's a different energy, right? You're not in, uh, it's, it's denser, right? It's more, it's like negative. These are energetic frequency. This is, they've measured these emotions in terms of energetic frequency. The energy of apathy of like, I don't care is a very low and dense energy, right? Um, whereas the energy of like, for example, let's just use acceptance, is a higher frequency energy. It's a, it's actually lighter, right? literally lighter. Right? We can go, we're not going to go down the, the rabbit hole of like um, how our world is energy and all that right now, because um, that's a deeper conversation. But imagine yourself as a light bulb, right? If you're in the energy of acceptance of yourself, you're, you're shining brighter. If you're in the energy of apathy and negative and like this, I don't care. It's actually, a, it's the, the light bulb is less bright. This is a very, very helpful visual tool for understanding emotional states because that's essentially what you're saying, right? You're saying when I don't care, it's this, it's a little bit like this, or even though maybe your ego doesn't want to admit it, it's probably down there. Would you agree or not? I agree. Um, yeah. yeah. This makes a lot of sense. And then when you come up into acceptance, it's totally different energy and like i said it's not like you're coming at it from an ego place of like i don't care about you um that's not what unfuck with the bull means it's very it's contained right there's a sense of self-security i accept myself therefore i'm unfuck with the bull but you're not projecting any any of your shit onto other people you're not trying to say it from an egotistical point of view because when you get to that level, you also will understand that everyone else is going through their own shit as well. And the only reason why anyone would be suffering is because they just haven't learned how to feel their own feelings. They have a lot of suppressed emotions. They haven't learned how to process their emotions. And so it comes out in struggle and suffering. And so when you realize that, you learn how to you know, influence your energy or what did you call it? And bend reality. Bend reality, right? When you learn how to be connected to and influence your own energy, you realize that we're energetic beings and you realize that when you can shift and move and bend your own energy, you're bending your reality. But you also realize everyone else has the ability to do that as well. And if they haven't learned how to do that yet, um, it's not necessarily their fault, 
it's just their own journey, right? And we have like want to have love and acceptance and compassion for not just ourselves, but for all other people. So I'll end it kind of here. Whatever you have inside yourself is reflected back to you. So if you're feeling like there's a, someone, or oh, I'm maybe humiliated by other people or um, I'm embarrassed by what other people think or I'm in fear of judgment of what other people think, you've got to take a real honest look at yourself and realize that's all in you. That's why you're perceiving that it would be coming from the outside because it's actually inside. And so this comes back to the point of let's learn how to process our own emotions. Let's learn how to take responsibility for our own emotions. And then we won't project that it's someone else making us feel this way. We'll realize that it's just how we're feeling. And that's okay because we're humans and we're allowed to feel all of the things, especially when we go through hardship. It's totally okay to feel everything. And it's, it's not just totally okay. It's really necessary and important to feel everything. Um, so yeah, it's good that you're, you know, with the psychologist and stuff like that, man, that'll be helpful. Um, use the centering exercise because that will give you some space internally to process things. Um, and yeah, you know, you can obviously do like 20 minutes of meditation in the morning and 20 minutes of meditation at the end of the day as well. Um, with the meditation, right, the way I see it, I don't try to make it a woo-woo thing. I'm more of this like no bullshit approach. When you sit with meditation, all you're doing is sitting and allowing yourself to become more familiar with yourself. You're giving yourself some uninterrupted space to process your thoughts and to process your emotions. It's really helpful for healing yourself, right? Simply by just allowing yourself to be. A lot of people try meditation and they say, oh, I can't do it. My thoughts are too blah, blah, blah. My thoughts are just going. Just understand that it's okay. Let, let, them, let them do their thing. Let them just unravel, right? Let yourself unravel into a practice of, of meditation. And um, yeah, if you do that for a month or two, you'll see some significant changes. You'll feel a lot more connected to yourself. So yeah, thank you for um, thank you for coming on today, man. Thank you for like being open and vulnerable with me. And uh, I know that was like at some level quite confronting for you. So I really appreciate you for having the courage to um, yeah, to move through that with me. Thank you. Thank you for uh, leading and creating this safe space for me to share. Easy, bro. Cool. Thank you.